Going seven, cone complete with square branch. 120 for the height. We got 120 for the base. We got a 50 by 50 square branch going into this cone. So to start laying off, we need to determine a baseline and a center line. So for the baseline here, we want to create enough room that we have for our pattern. So we're going to do a branch pattern and a hole pattern. So we have enough room over here. So we only need to do half a drawing. This is symmetrical on center, so we only need half. So as long as this fits on the page, so for this baseline here, we went up 50. This came over 10 millimeters on the side, so keeping it tight to the left. Just a little bit up from the bottom, so we have room for this branch here. The branch is 50, so we'll, be in, we'll end up being 200 for this branch. We're only about 10 millimeters apart between the front and the top view. Let's double check some dimensions. We're 60 radius at the base. We're 120 for the height. Double check your 160. The branch is 70 off. Off center, so there's your 70. And it's 50 by 50, so half will be the 25. So there it is there, fully laid out. I don't need to draw this, it's just showing or dictating that looking that way, it is square. So you can tell that from the top, that it's square from the front. We see some lines here, some divisions. So what we need to do is we're gonna break this into element lines, we're gonna project them up to the top, and we're gonna do a section view at every one of these elevations up here in the top. So we'll project those up and we'll project where those radiuses are at those elevations. So let's start with putting these element lines on the branch. Now it's 50 so we're just going to divide into 5 so 10 millimeters each. And we'll bring those all the way over to the center. And then it's nice to have the construction line just a little bit longer, just in case. Okay, so those are 10 mil apart. Everywhere this element line hits the sloping side, we're going to bring this all the way to the top. Also, we can number these. We'll just start with one at the bottom, two, three, four, five, and six. <clears throat> we'll start with number one. So number one at the sloping side, all the way to the top. And we'll just bring all these up. So slide your square over to number two there. And these should be even distance the whole way. Okay, this little radius here at the top is this cone truncated right here. So at this elevation, this is what this would look like. And that is what we're going to be doing with this branch. Same thing. So at this elevation, we're going to make a radius. So it would be the same radius here as it would be up here. So on center, We'll start at number one, and we only need to arc this down till it hits the edge of the branch.
And the last one. Okay, so each one of these from center was just swung down so they all have a different radius to the edge of this branch. Now from here at this location, this would be the edge of the branch. We're gonna bring that down to each one of these element lines. So one here, two, three, four, five, and six is over here at the other side. There's six and five. It'll get a little messy there and number the rest so we won't. I'm gonna use my colored pen here, my blue pen. Just to bring this down to, oh, so number one is not far enough. Either is number six. So let's go ahead and bring these all the way to center as well. Okay. So number one is just on the other side of that number two coming up. It's pretty close. Right just on the other edge of it. Again, I'm just using, if you had a, a colored pencil, that would work as well. Because obviously if there's a mistake, this pen is not going to erase very well. Four is just on this side of the five. Where did I say here? Let's double check here. So four is coming up. So we're doing four. Better to be safe than sorry to double check. Number five, a little easier to see. And number six. So we got quite a bit of shape on the side of this branch. And then there we go. So looking at the front view, this, if look, having your eyes looking this way, this is the profile of this branch. Okay, now we're ready to make the branch pattern, and then we'll do the whole pattern. Get rid of some of that construction line there. So we need to come over um, a certain distance, and that distance, this is about 63. So we need to be at least 6370 over. So I'm going to go 170 from the edge, just to give myself a little extra room there. <clears throat> okay, now this branch here, we can actually just uh, copy that over. So I'm going to start with this and then we'll build up from there. So I'm just going to bring these element lines over till it hits this edge of this branch because I'm starting this edge here is this edge here. And I'm just going to copy this over. And then from there I need to do a top and then another side and I'll do the bottom of the branch below. So really what we're doing here is just copy paste. So if we're in an AutoCAD program, that's what we'd be doing. Selecting and moving over. Okay. Okay. 
So this is 50 millimeters. So what we need to do is do the length of this. So that's 50. So this would be 100 down here. And we'll be another 100 coming all the way to the top. So we're 200 overall. So there's 50. And then here's the end. And I'm going to need a center line for the top. And I need a center line for the bottom. And I'll need divisions of 10 up top here as well for the, for the other side. Okay, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So we can go ahead and do this other side here to start. Just going to bring those over about the same distance. center line and the other center line for the bottom and the very edge so the overall length is now complete let's go ahead and copy this side of the branch so we'll start with number six here so from the outside here all the way to this curve, so to the blue line. And we're going to mark here. So all we're going to do is copy that out. Same with the top here. So we can number this as well. This will be six, five, four, three, two, and one. And then this is the same here. We're going to do these for each one. Make sure to do the top and the bottoms both at the same time. And you're not having to do things twice. There's two sides, so now we have to do the top there. The easiest thing here for this is to locate this. So here's really the top is right here, but we do need to come off of this location right here. So if we bring this all the way out, that will be 70 mil. Make a mark 70 mil out, and then this will be the radius from here to number six will be the radius.
adjust a little bit if you have to. That's pretty good there. Again, that just came off the top right here to number six. So from center to six, and this is 70 mil out. And we're going to do the same thing for the bottom. So reset this to your 70 mils. This will be on the bottom here. And then we need to go all the way to number one. So from center to number one. Okay, so there's your bottom, there's your top, there's your sides. We'll sneak those in. Make sure to use the pencil side of your snake. Okay, we'll identify that. So this is obviously a center line right here. We want right over top of that. So you just want to get your name on here. Uh, today's date. So you know when this was built. And this is a cone branch. Square branch. This is drawing number seven. And this is a full pattern. And again, this just comes right off the sheet here, just starting at the top and working your way down. So you got the bend lines here, forming directions. Now, if you could bend this out of one piece, which would be impossible, you'd have to do it in two pieces. Like two pieces of angle. So you'd probably bend this one and or this one and this one. So we'll put 90 degrees. 90 degrees on there. Now we need a shear line. Those are shear lines here, shear lines, burn lines. Identify all those because you don't want to be cutting the wrong line. Okay, and that's it. There's that pattern. Okay, so we're going to do the whole pattern over here. So probably about the center of the page here would work. About 120 over. Okay, so we need to find a height here. Doesn't really matter on the height, but I'm just going to make it the same as the top of the cone here. This will work just fine. So we'll call this the apex here at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to take everything off the sloping side. So one through six. 
and all the way down to your base. So we'll start at the base. Let's go from the apex of the cone here all the way to your base. And we're do a nice big uh, sweep on this. We'll probably go all the way to the top here. And that's as far as we can go there, so that's all right. We're not going to be able to do uh, a cone pattern, or we don't have to. If we can get a bit of a cone pattern in there, we will. So we're going to go from number one, where number one hits the sloping side. Just notice I have a little little wobble here. I don't. The dividers must have skipped a skipped a thread or something there. That happens. Let's see what happens here. Hmm. Let's double check this here. This is a little bit off here too. Don't be moved. No, it's good to double check. Yeah, something's moved there. Okay, let's just uh, erase this. These things happen. Glad I caught it now instead of later. doesn't move this time. That well, moved on us there. Not sure what it was. Maybe the tip at the top moved. Okay, so going to number two. Again, everything always comes off the sloping side. are probably needed than need be, but that's all right. To number four. These should be evenly spaced. Five and then six. And we'll do the top of the cone here as well. So from the apex of the top of the cone. Okay, so just a little bit of math here. So we do have our 120 for the base. So 120 times the pi seventy six point nine nine. Now we'll divide that in two. So that would be for a half pattern. So if we did a quarter on either side, so let's just divide this into two one more time. Yeah, 
94.25. That would be off. So we could do a cone pattern. It would probably fit on here. So if we used our flexible ruler here, let's see if it'll fit in here. We can do a cone pattern as well. So 94.25, 94, it's pretty close. So we'll go ahead and we'll measure this on the baseline here. And then there would be our cone pattern, half pattern, if we were making one, and we are. Didn't think we were going to fit it into the page here, but it seems like it does. So that would be a half pattern for our cone. So now we're going to go ahead and put in... Um, the whole pattern. So the whole pattern comes off the side of the cone here. So what we're going to be doing with this is where these project through, so we are going to project these to the edge. Start at the apex here, and we're going to bring this out. So that was that was number one here. So we're now where the number one curved line hits the edge of this branch. We're going to project that out. So that'll be number one, number two, three, four, and five, and six. So we'll do two. So from the apex. Two, and we'll do all of these here. There's number three. Again, trying to get these as accurately as possible. There's two, three. And six. And I just looked over at my how to. My how to looks just a little bit different. I have, for some reason, number six should have went all the way to center here. So for this here, this should have went to center. So I'm maybe about a one mil, two millimeters off here. And that's what happened over here. So really, this should have came right up to this edge here. A little bit out there on that. Well, or even quite a bit out there on that. But I'm going to keep going for what I have here. This should have come up a lot more, a lot steeper. So I would have been short on that. So there's what's happened there. So we'll keep going here um, for what this one is. It, is. it is a little bit off. It is different. It's not going to match the template. But um, still the procedures are still going to work but it's just a little bit off. Number six should have went all the way to here, all the way to the end. But for this to match here, we're just gonna keep going. It's nice to look at the, the how-to, or if this was done on the computer, obviously it'd be a lot more accurate. So to number one, I've got about 30. So I've measured from here to number one, and I'm going to measure here because this is the this here is the baseline we have our baseline here and we're going to measure over 30 for number one number 
one, do two. And try to bend that ruler. Thirty-four. Working our way along this curved edge here to number four. Looks like we're about 45, 46. We've got about 55. And number six. So number six, I'm going to go to where we... This this what drawing's gone to instead of the outer edge. About seventy five on this one. So Number six, should I came all the way to the outside. Good thing we're not doing a marked, marked drawing on this one. Uh, this one's not for grades, so a little bit out here as we've learned something. But we'll keep going here. So from the apex, and we're just going to connect the dots here, all the way from the baseline to the apex. This is where the, I guess the sharper pencils or better rulers or better lighting are all going to help. So it's a little bit dark in here because I'm trying to reduce the glare off the paper. I know it's kind of glaring off the ruler a little bit, but not much I can do about that. And just working all the way up from the baseline up to the apex. Okay, let's go ahead and number these. So this one here would have been one, two, three, four, five, and six. So number six will match with that, five. So this should be able to go down one over one, down one over one, down one over one, and down one over one. Same with the other side. We'll start at one, up one over one, up one over one. And it's nice when this works like this. It's just like a graph pattern. Uh, obviously, this here is our center line. We'll mark that there to start. Uh, we'll snake in the shape. So I 
guess my hole pattern would have been a little small, but so I guess sometimes a little small is better than too big. When it comes to a hole. A branch would have been too short though. Okay, so there's our whole pattern there. We'll identify. Again, just putting your name in here. Your date. Looking through here. This is a square hole. I'll just call it a square hole. And we're still on drawing number seven. And this is a full pattern. So we could just leave this as is, and this we did, we ended up doing the cones. So we'll just we can do our shear lines here. We can do our burn lines down below. We got a burn line up top. We've got a form two. And again, just double check in the sheet here all the way through. And that looks to be pretty good. So if we were marking or greeting this up, this uh, would end up being a a little bit off or quite a bit in this location there so again just putting these over top of one another to double check here double check your hole pattern and then you can double check this is a full pattern for the cone but you can do a half pattern on there yeah there's all your patterns your how to's and your step by step there you go drawing number seven thank you